Okay, hello everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started with Matthew chapter 26. When Jesus had finished all these words, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people were gathered together in the court of the high priest named Caiaphas, or Caiaphas, and they plotted together to seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they were saying, Not during the festival, otherwise a riot might occur among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him and with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. But the disciples were indignant when they saw this and said, Why this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you bother the woman? For she has done a good deed to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be spoken of in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out thirty pieces of silver to him. From then on he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus said to him, You have said it yourself. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many trans for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night, before a roaster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And they said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch for me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So, you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
he went away again a second time and prayed saying my father if this cannot pass away unless i drink it your will be done again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy and he left them again and went away and prayed a third time saying the same thing once more then he came to the disciples and said to them are you still sleeping and resting behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners get up let us be going behold the one who betrays me is at hand while he was still speaking behold judas one of the twelve came up accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who came from the chief priests and elders of the people now he was who was betraying him gave them a sign saying whomever i kiss he is the one seize him immediately judas went to jesus and said hail rabbi and kissed him and jesus said to him friend do what you have come for then they came and laid hands on jesus and seized him and behold one of them one of those who were with jesus reached and drew out his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear then jesus said to him put your sword back into its place for all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword or do you think that i cannot appeal to my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels how then will the scripture be fulfilled which says that it must happen this way at that time jesus said to the crowds have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would against a robber every day i used to sit in the temple teaching you and you did not seize me but all this has taken place to fulfill the scripture of the prophets then all the disciples left him and fled those who had seized jesus led him away to caiaphas the high priest where the scribes and the elders were gathered together but peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest and entered in and sat down with the officers to see the outcome now the chief priest and the whole council kept trying to obtain false testimony against jesus so that they might put him to death they did not find any even though many false witnesses came forward but later on two came forward and said this man stated i am able to destroy the temple of god and to rebuild it in three days the high priest stood up and said to him do you not answer what is it that these men are testifying against you but jesus kept silent and the high priest said to him i adjure you by the living god that you tell us whether you are the christ the son of the living god jesus said to him you have said it yourself nevertheless i tell you hereafter you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven then the high priest tore his robes and said he is blasphemed what further need do we have of witnesses behold you have now heard the blasphemy what do you think they answered he deserves death then they spat in his face and beat him with their fists and others slapped him and said prophesy to us you christ who is the one who hit you now peter was sitting outside in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him and said you too were with jesus the galilean but he denied it before them all saying i do not know what you are talking about when he had gone out to the gateway another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there this man was with jesus of nazareth and again he denied it with an oath i do not know this man a little later the bystanders came up and said to peter surely you too are one of them for even the way you talk gives you away then he began to curse and swear i do not know the man and immediately a rooster crowed and peter remembered which jesus had said before a rooster crows you will deny me three times and he went out and wept bitterly matthew 20 chapter 27 now when morning came all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against jesus to put him to death and they bound him and led him away and delivered him to pilate the governor then when judas had betrayed him saw that he had been condemned he felt remorse and returned to thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders saying i have sinned by betraying innocent blood but they said what is that to us see to that yourself and he threw the pieces of silver into the temple sanctuary and departed and he went away and hanged himself 
The chief priests took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the temple treasury, since it is the price of blood. Then they conferred together, and with money bought Potter's Field as a burial place for strangers. For this reason that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one whose price had been set by the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor questioned him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testify against you? And he did not answer him with regard to even a single charge. So the governor was quite amazed. Now at the feast the governor was accustomed to release for the people any one prisoner whom he, they wanted. At that time they were holding a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Or Barabbas. Then, So when the people gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you? Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ, for he knew that because of the envy they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message, saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to put Jesus to death. But the governor said to them, Which of these two men do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Crucify him. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they kept shouting all the more, saying, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but rather that a riot was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to that yourselves. And all the people said, His blood shall be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them, but after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him, mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, and took the reed, and beat, or began to beat him on the head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off him, and put his own garments back on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they were coming out, they found a man named Siren or a man of Siren named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they gave him wine to drink, mixed with gall, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. And above his head, they put up the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At that time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads. And saying, You, who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. If he delights in him, for he said, I am the son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there 
when they heard it, began saying, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran, and taking a sponge, he filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest of them said, Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split, and tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tomb after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him, keeping guard over Jesus, when they saw the earthquake and the things that were happening, became very frightened and said, Truly this was the Son of God. Many women were looking there on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee while ministering to him. Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, they came, or there came a rich man from Ara- or Arimathea, named Joseph, who himself had become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the grave. Now on the next day, the day after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that when he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I am to rise again. Therefore give orders for the grave to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may come and steal him away and say to the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go and make it as secure as you know how. And they went and made the grave secure, and along with the guard, they set a seal on the stone. Matthew chapter 28 Now after the Sabbath, as it began, or as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled away the stone, and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook in fear of him, and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee, where you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly, and fear and great joy, and ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they came up came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed, and this story was widely spread among the Jews, and is to this day. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus said, Come up, and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. With that, I'm going to stop. I just want to finish up Matthew and start Mark sometime tomorrow. So, let me 
say thanks for coming. Stop the recording.